Um, so this workshop is on gardens, um, which is a kind of DAO design pattern uh, that uh, we've been working on uh, at OneHive. Um, it's sort of like a, a specific template, but also just sort of a, a general design pattern that uh, uh, gives you some new tools uh, to play around with. Um, so uh, at a high level overview, uh, it's designed for public communities. So like if you compare this to something like Moloch where you're uh, asking for permission and then get getting voted in um, into like a club, um, but your membership shares are non-transferable. They're like, uh, uh, like a club membership. Um, this is uh, intended to allow for uh, like transferable membership tokens that you can put on Uniswap or bonding curve. Um, people can come and go sort of freely. Um, and we use uh, time and stake uh, as like mediators uh, for how resources flow uh, within the organization um, and enable sort of robust exit guarantees. So in the same way that like Moloch provides rage quit as this guarantee that before anything like catastrophic happens, uh, you're going to have the opportunity to exit. Um, we do the same uh, sort of dynamic within gardens, but we allow um, for simultaneously many proposals to be considered at once. Um, and we use uh, a mechanism called conviction voting to do that. Um, so one of the, the core principles here is that uh, you allow many proposals to be considered at once. Um, each proposal uh, that's submitted is requesting um, a certain amount of funds from the DAO. Um, and the request amount relative to the funds available, like in the, the DAO's like bank account or uh, common pool, um, determines the required amount of support to approve that request. Um, so if the DAO has 100 DAI and you request 90 DAI, uh, it's basically going to be impossible for that to pass um, because you're requesting 90% <laughs> of all of the available funds, um, and that's not cool. Um, so there's like a, a set of parameters for conviction voting that allow you to determine kind of the uh, maximum and minimum amount a request uh, can be for, um, and uh, how how much like the uh, thresholds uh, are determined to um, to pass specific proposals. And the uh, higher you get to that kind of maximum, uh, the request amount approaches infinity. Um, and uh, and in order to support a proposal, you stake to it. Um, your conviction for that proposal accumulates over some time period. Um, and then once enough conviction um, and enough stake has been given to a specific proposal, it can be executed. And the really nice thing about this is that the DAO doesn't need to reach majority consensus to approve requests. Um, so you get this kind of like natural flow uh, of influence, uh, but less politics. Um, the uh, second kind of core idea um, to the like gardens pattern um, is that we have restrictions on exit. Um, so while we allow tokens to be transferable or non-transferable, um, we're going to treat uh, any transfers of the token, any redemptions for like assets um, or selling via the bonding curve as uh, as an exit. And um, exit then gets restricted um, whenever you're staking or supporting a proposal or if you vote yes on an administrative decision. Um, so like a binary choice, yes, no decision if you vote yes on that. Um, you're locked in. Um, so this is very similar to uh, Moloch's rage quit mechanics. Um, if you're actively participating in the org, you get locked into the results of those actions. Um, and uh, the people that disagree with you uh, or disagree with the direction have the opportunity to exit um, the organization before you do. Um, so the, the next core idea here uh, is that there is a resource pool um, of shared resources that the DAO controls and interacts with. Um, and there needs to be a process or policy that puts shared resources into that pool. Um, so there's kind of two templates that sort of fit into the gardens pattern right now. Um, and you could come up with different variations on this. Uh, there's the honey template, which is what we're using um, for onehive.org. Um, and this takes a continuous issuance policy. It just mints new uh, tokens and puts those tokens in the common pool um, each block. Um, and so uh, over time, the uh, the pool increases. And then as proposals pass, the pool decreases. Uh, 
with the gardens template, uh, which has a bonding curve mechanic, um, the pool gets filled up because each time people enter or exit via the bonding curve, a fee is imposed. Um, and that's configurable, like it's a percentage of uh, each of those uh, uh, exchanges. Um, and that gets diverted into the common pool and used to fund proposals. Um, other variations on this um, that might substitute or supplement those, uh, those mechanisms for filling up the pool um, could be like harbinger taxes or like external membership fees via a protocol like unlocked or something like that. Um, but the, the main idea here is that you have this mechanism, which is constantly pulling funds out of this common pool to fund the DAO's activities. Um, and you need some, uh, some mechanism that is filling that pool back up um, so that you, you reach this like equilibrium balance. So th those are the kind of the core concepts. And I'll stop there for a second. Uh, if anybody has any like burning questions or is totally confused or lost, um, now's a good, good time to speak up. Um, then we can kind of go through this sort of like hypothetical example of a use case, and then I'll walk through deploying a garden on, on Rinka B and the configuration parameters that you can play with. Um, but uh, if, if anybody has questions now, uh, it's a good, good opportunity. Nobody? Um, and do I sound OK on the recording? Um, or was I like cutting out? Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, so yeah, to put this into practice, like you can do uh, you can do a DAO just for the sake of a DAO, um, like a community coming together to like fund arbitrary things that they care about. Um, or you could apply this to a specific like use case. Um, and uh, with uh, Aragon Connect, you can actually create an interface that's tied to that specific use case. Um, so one of the ones that I think would be really interesting is this idea of a decentralized autonomous publication. Um, so you have like uh, this premise where you have uh, a website that posts content like articles or memes or, um, or something um, where uh, people might come and consume that, that content. Think like dig.com or boing boing or even like Reddit. Um, and the articles uh, that get submitted are continuously ranked and the highest ranked ones are shown at the top of the list. Um, and maybe you sort by new or something like that if you're like interested in participating in the curation process. Um, so if we use the gardens kind of model uh, as a backend for this, um, people who are interested in participating, they would go and buy tokens either on the bonding curve or on something like Uniswap. Um, and then they could stake on the articles that get submitted. Um, as they do, the articles that are more popular rise to the top. Um, and then anyone can submit an article or piece of content. Um, and when they submit a request, uh, they're actually um, submitting a conviction voting request um, for payment. So if uh, enough people stake on the content they're submitting um, and it starts trending, um, they'll get a portion or a payout from that common pool for their, uh, their contribution. Um, the publication can then like monetize via Harbinger tax-based ads or uh, like via unlock protocol for membership subscriptions. Um, and then you can split the, the revenue from those, uh, uh, those flows between that common pool that's kind of rewarding the people that are submitting content and the bonding curve reserve, um, which is rewarding people for uh, uh, curating content. So like if lots of people start uh, like clicking on these ads or paying for ad space um, for people's attention or, or they, um, pay for like uh, subscription memberships and the, uh, the publication's really successful. Um, all of the people that are actually participating in the curation and the submission of, uh, of content are going to get rewarded. Um, so that's like one, one kind of possible use case where you apply this general pattern for like a public community to coordinate. And then you, uh, you take like the interface layer uh, and create a specific workflow around uh, like a publication uh, as an example. Um, there's another, idea floating around around like a decentralized art gallery um, in a very similar kind of model. Um, you could apply it to, uh, uh, to other things as well. well. Lots of stuff related to curation. Um, so let's hop into deployment. Um, this might be small. Um, 
Let's try and make this bigger. Um, OK. Um, so this isn't as important as this screen over here. So right now, this is a deployment script in the Gardens template repo. Um, and at the end, I'll share kind of a link to uh, a like hacker kit resource with like links to all of the repositories and, and some of the information. Uh, it's not as documented as I, I would like, um, but uh, it's a, a good starting point. Um, and we can always add to it or extend documentation or answer questions over time. Um, but uh, if you wanted to deploy a garden, uh, you download this repo, you do uh, npm uh, install, and um, you'd make sure you have like a uh, the key set up for your uh, like Aragon client thing. You can go to hack.aragon.org for that, um, and then you'd configure your options in this like create garden script. Um, and so these are just sort of helper functions. You don't need to change these um, in configuration. This uh, this template is the one with the bonding curve. So we have a collateral token. Um, by default here is like a test honey token on, on Rinkaby. Um, and there's a link to like a DAO where you can go mint the, the token itself. But you can put in any ERC20 token address um, on the, the network that you're deploying to. Uh, um, and it's organization token name. Um, so this is uh, the... Uh, the token that people are going to buy and use to stake on proposals. Um, and uh, you can call it whatever you want. I would recommend using a token symbol that's three letters. Um, I think that like if you do something longer, uh, things start to get like funny in the UI. I, I don't think it like breaks anything if you're using a connect interface, but it's probably just easier if you stick to three letters. Um, then there's some settings for uh, voting. Um, so can say support required is 50%. I mean, a minimum acceptance quorum is 1%. You, like, these should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, you've got uh, the vote duration blocks, uh, vote buffer blocks, and execution delay blocks. Um, this is for dandelion voting, uh, not conviction voting. Um, and this is for binary choice uh, kind of like administrative decisions. Um, and it works very much like uh, like Moloch style voting um, does, where like proposals happen in sequence. Um, there's like a buffer between each uh, each vote, um, and then there's a delay after the vote before it can actually get executed. And that's so uh, when people vote yes, they have a uh, have the ability to kind of rage quit. Um, so you've got these different parameters here that you can play around with. These aren't super realistic um, because they're pretty short for um, uh, like practical use, um, they probably would be much longer. Um, but for the purpose of like testing on Rinkaby, you don't want them to be super long. Um, then you have this toll gate fee. Um, and this is basically the price in the uh, collateral token um, that somebody would have to pay to the org to submit a proposal. Um, and this is just a simple way to kind of prevent people from like spamming the, uh, the vote queue um, while keeping it more open. Um, there's an option to use an agent uh, or a vault. Uh, if you use an agent, uh, the org can like interact with external contracts. Um, by default, you use finance instead of conviction. I don't really recommend that from like the, uh, if you want like a more traditional like DAO setup with a bonding curve, you can do that. Um, then you get the like bonding curve parameterization settings. Um, so when you set up a bonding curve, there's this sort of initialization period where you have to have enough collateral to kind of kickstart the thing. Um, and so there's this uh, stage called a presale, um, where you have a presale goal of a certain number of the collateral tokens, a kind of period um, to to reach that goal, um, and an exchange rate. Uh, in this case, it's one to one, so you get just as many. Uh, of the tokens as you kind of contribute in terms of the collateral token, um, but you can make this a multiplier. So like uh, you get uh, 10 organization tokens. Uh, it's mostly for granularity. Um, there's this vesting cliff and vesting period. Um, these have to be higher than the pre-sale period, um, but uh, it, they're pretty important in the sense that like if you start this thing, you don't want people to be able to uh, 
immediately sell out, uh, especially if there's like a multiplier on the uh, the contribution window. Um, I'll explain that when we kind of walk through the org um, uh, a, a little bit more more carefully or, or clearly. Um, then you have an open date. You can leave this at zero um, for a testing period, but like uh, if you wanted to deploy this thing and say that it's not going to start for like a couple of weeks, you could uh, set the specific block number, I believe it is. Um, for most purposes, uh, you can probably just set this at zero. Um, then there's this option for splitting uh, funds between the common pool um, and kind of the reserve. Um, so if you like use this, it's set at 50%. So you collect 100 tokens, you'll start with 50 tokens in the bonding curve reserve that collateralizes like the buy and sell curve um, and 50 tokens in the common pool that like, people can use to make proposals against. Um, then you have entry and exit fee settings. Um, so uh, this is the primary way where uh, like funds will initially move uh, into this, this common pool over time. Um, so this is 20%. Um, so every time, like if you tried to do a purchase on the bonding curve, it would take 20% off the top, um, put that in the, um, the common pool and then make your trade. Um, same with the, uh, the sell uh, fee, it'll take 20% of the prote proceeds of the, uh, the sale and put it in the, uh, the bonding curve reserve. Um, you, can, uh, you can have zero uh, fees. You can have uh, like fees only on buys or fees only on sells, um, and that can kind of change some of the dynamics. Um, uh, definitely a, an area to play around with. Um, then you have the reserve ratio, which is also really important. Um, the lower the reserve ratio, the like more uh, like volatile um, uh, and like more slippage you're going to get um, on the like bonding curve when you like buy and sell. Um, if you have 100% here, it's effectively a one-to-one -one peg, um, which can be interesting, especially if you have the buy and sell fees. Um, so you get like a, a fee to kind of participate, but you're not actually like creating a price difference between the uh, bonded token and the collateral token. Uh, the uh, virtual supply and virtual balance parameters you probably don't want to touch. Um, they're like... Uh, uh, they're there so you can adjust the granularity of the uh, the bonding curve um, in terms of some, like how some of the math works, um, but the behavior will get much less intuitive if you start messing with these uh, these parameters. Um, but yeah, so that, that's basically it. Um, I realized uh, while I was setting this up that the uh, this version of the template um, that's deployed doesn't allow you to specify the conviction voting parameters. Um, we'll add that in very soon. Um, and if I look at the Honey template, which is kind of uh, a, a variation on the model using issuance as opposed to the bonding curve uh, to fund the reserve, um, we have these parameters here um, for uh, conviction voting. Um, there's like a decay parameter, a max ratio, and a minimum threshold. Um, and then you, uh, you pass those in. These need to be kind of documented and made much more intuitive. Um, there's a project going on with uh, Block Science right now to create a CAD CAD model um, for conviction voting that'll help like document and explain these parameters. Um, but uh, for now, um, like you can play around with the default, or if you like, uh, if you want to like really dig into it, I can um, uh, I can try and uh, try and explain uh, the relationship between these different things. Um, I'll try and document that over the next couple of days as well. But uh, if, if I get into it without documentation, I think I'm just going to confuse people. Um, but the the intuition is here that like you can determine the uh, like minimum uh, minimum request thresholds, the like maximum request thresholds, and kind of the rate uh, at which conviction accrues um, by adjusting these parameters. Um, so let's go ahead and. Uh, and this is a good time while I'm setting this up if anybody has questions again. Um, we'll go ahead and deploy.
So this will take a few transactions to actually go through because um, there's uh, a lot that it's actually deploying. Um, one thing to note is that there's this parameter here um, that isn't configurable in the script, but you can just swap it out here. Um, if you want to pass like a DAO ID and get like a, uh, an ENS name um, to use uh, to access it, um, you can do that uh, with this parameter. Um, So now we've got our org deployed. Um, and let's see if I can make this bigger. Um, we see the conviction voting app, the marketplace app. Uh, we've got redemptions, standalone voting, and, and kind of tokens here. Um, when you first deploy, um, you'll be in this like pre-sale phase. And if you look, um, nobody will have it. There won't be any token holders. There won't be like anything kind of happening yet. Um, so once it's it's deployed, um, somebody will open the pre-sale. Uh, we'll just kind of walk through the the whole process. Once it's open, uh, and we see like time remaining timeout. This is because we had the parameter for like start time at like zero. Um, so it kind of thinks the pre-sale is already over, but like it'll still let you contribute. Um, and we need a hundred honey. So we'll just buy all of the shares to get this started. Um, you'll get this, like if you're using the client, this isn't a, the case with Connect, it'll pr prompt you to sign two transactions. And um, because the first one's an approve, the second one um, won't see the approve has gone through and will tell, tell you that it's going to air. Um, but you can just sort of ignore that. See? for these to go through. Okay. Yeah, complete. Uh, and then once uh, once you've reached the like pre-sale goal, uh, you can basically initialize the bonding curve by saying open trading, uh, and anybody can call this. Um, and now that it's closed, we get like a completely different interface here. Uh, this is sort of like an exchange uh, interface because uh, the bonding curve kind of acts like its own uh, own instance of like a Uniswap market um, connected to the token. Um, and we'll see based on kind of the parameters, we have like that initial like 50% of the contributions in the reserve um, because we had the um, collateralization ratio at 25%. Um, the market cap uh, is 200 uh, uh, of the like collateral token in this case, honey. Um, so that's like, you've got 25% in reserves, and uh, and we have an effective price of two, um, so twice as as high as um, the price uh, when we did the like presale, um, and that's why the like uh, vesting uh, vesting options are important um, because. If you didn't have the the vesting options, people could immediately like participate and then kind of sell out. Um, you can uh, adjust the parameters between like the re reserve ratio and the market cap. All right, the reserve ratio and the like split um, and the like multipliers such that you don't end up with a like significant jump here. Um, but uh, those are all kind of parameters, so you need to be able to pull those uh, those different levers. Um, but now, if somebody wanted to like buy Honey, um, they could say, uh, say we buy 50 honey worth uh, more, um, and we'll see the like feet of 10 honey um, that gets kind of pulled off the top, and then it makes the trade. 
um, you can specify like an acceptable level of slippage. This isn't like uh, slippage in terms of like the total amount, but this is like slippage in the same way that like Uniswap has a slippage guard. Um, somebody like front runs your transaction and it's different than you kind of expected by more than 1%, it will fail. Um, If you're using, uh, depending on the collateral asset that you're using for this, like if you're using uh, a mini me token um, that has a proven call support, um, you'll just get like a single transaction. If you're using something like uh, ETH or like XDAI uh, or any token that doesn't support a proven call, um, you'll have to do, uh, well, with ETH or XDAI, you shouldn't have to because it'll be payable. But like with a standard ERC-20, you'll have the approved and call workflow. Um, but uh, now the price has jumped <laughs> significantly because uh, the that like single buy order was uh, like a quarter of the supply, <laughs> um, so it's a pretty uh, pretty significant portion. Um, so it jumped quite a bit. Uh, the price is now 328. The market cap has changed. Our reserves have increased. Um, and if we hop over to kind of conviction voting, I'll take a second to load. We'll see that we have uh, the 100 tokens that we got from the pre-sale plus like nine we got from that sale. Our funding pool is the like 50 plus 100. Um, if we make a proposal um, and we can kind of imagine uh, like uh, from a connect interface, maybe this is submitting the article um, and we would like abstract the request amount and the beneficiary from them, they'd just be submitting the article. Um, but for, uh, uh, for demo's sake, we can say this is a test. Um, and we want to request some portion of the like 60 honey. So if we say we want one honey out of this like 60, um, which is like a relatively small amount, we're going to require 6% um, uh, total support and conviction. Um, if we say that we want two, it jumps to seven, three, it jumps to nine, five, 15, seven. We start to get this like exponential increase um, towards infinity. And if I get to like 10, I'm already at over 180% um, conviction required to pass. So let's say uh, I want two. Um, and those numbers will fluctuate as the like funding pool increases. Um, so like if all of a sudden there's like a bunch of trading activity and the funding pool increases, um, a proposal that wouldn't have passed um, before um, might uh, might have sufficient conviction to pass um, and vice versa if something like uh, only required 5% um, to pass, but then a bunch of other proposals pass and the available funds decrease, um, the, uh, the required conviction will uh, automatically increase. Um, and let's say if I support this proposal and I just support it with the max, see that like now we've got this status update saying that this will probably pass um, and it'll give you an estimate at the, the point in which conviction will have accrued sufficiently to reach that threshold. Um, so it says like in seven hours and 45 minutes, this will likely be at a point uh, like all else being equal um, where you could come and execute it because this conviction uh, thing will be above the threshold. Um, if, uh, if I reduce support, like um, say, I only support it with uh, a portion uh, of my like influence because I wanted to support other proposals. Uh, we'll update. So 
So this will update and we'll see the uh, conviction graph has changed um, and the estimate has changed. So even though this will still pass, even though I supported it with less, um, because the conviction accrues over time um, and it, uh, it slows down as it reaches this like max conviction threshold, the point at which it crosses this line is now much further out. Um, so it's like two day, days, four hours out. Um, and the, the intuition here is that like proposals that have a lot of support, um, they'll, can, uh, they'll accrue uh, more conviction quicker um, and then they can be passed quicker. Um, and if you spread your, conviction, your uh, support over a large number of proposals, um, they'll eventually um, uh, potentially pass, they'll, they'll eventually reach that max conviction, um, but it'll take in longer. Um, and so the rate at which uh, funds can be allocated um, via the DAO uh, is something that kind of dynamically adjusts, um, both based on the amount of funds that are available, um, the like relative support, um, and kind of the, uh, the time uh, that things are supported. Um, so you know, as like a participant, um, even if you're not like a whale, um, the whales aren't going to be able to immediately go and like take all of the funds out of the org or do whatever they want. They're going to have to like wait um, for conviction to accrue. And that gives you the opportunity to, to exit if you want to. Um, and there's kind of two ways to exit um, or three ways to exit, really. You could add your token to MetaMask and, and decide to transfer it. Um, you can redeem uh, against the tokens in the common pool. So right now there's... Uh, there's 60 tokens in the, the common pool here. Um, and there is uh, like a sell price of uh, three, uh, three honey per token. Um, so I have like multiple options if I wanna like redeem or sell my tokens, I could sell it uh, via the bonding curve and get a price probably around this depending on how much I'm trying to sell. Um, or I could go and redeem um, kind of like a rage quit style um, and I can redeem some amount of uh, tokens. Uh, in this case, the redeem price is a bit lower than the sell price uh, because this is roughly like a little over two, um, uh, two honey per token versus the bonding curve that's offering three. Um, so if I was rational actor here, um, I would sell, uh, sell my tokens against the bonding curve um, by placing a sell order, say 10. Um, uh, but the bonding curve is going to give me like a fee. It's 261. So there's like a potential arbitrary charge opportunity. Um, and if you're building a connect interface, you might abstract all that stuff away from people. But the nice thing is that as a token holder, you have this claim uh, and kind of guaranteed exit um, against the organization's assets. So if somebody buys into the curve and they like start making decisions that um, you disagree with, um, they're pumping up the price and allowing you to like sell behind them uh, or redeem uh, and re reduce the organization's funds. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the the high level overview uh, of this uh, uh, this kind of mechanism. Um, there's kind of variations. Uh, we haven't like shown the uh, the like issuance one, but I can go to like onehive.org. Um, this is kind of using uh, this this template um, that we launched recently, and you can see this alternative interface for conviction um, that's a little bit simplified. You don't get the graph, um, but the uh, the core princ principles are there, um, and we're just using Uniswap as the the market maker. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of all I had uh, scheduled for the uh, the workshop. Um, I have. Uh, I have this link here um, in a GitHub repo that basically, ah, oh, here it is. Uh, this kind of uh, gives you an overview of the garden's design pattern. Um, there's some discussions on, on the forum about different kind of ideas like the uh, decentralized publication one. Um, there's links to the, uh, the different uh, repos that have these, these templates and they have deployment scripts. Um, both of these templates are deployed on Rinkaby and on XDI. Um, and um, there's the uh, the repo for that custom interface using Connect. There's links to the repos for all of the like component apps, like the bonding curve, the conviction voting app is like standalone things. Um, there's subgraphs and connectors for Aragon Connect for conviction voting and dandelion voting. Um, we don't have them for, and I think tokens as well. 
Um, we don't have them for redemptions and issuance and tollgate uh, and marketplace. Um, but the um, those apps you you need less like state to to like pull from, so you can actually interact directly with the contracts. Um, it might be useful to get like a subgraph connector for marketplace. Um, and if anybody wants to like hack on that, I, I think we could assist. Um, but it doesn't exist yet. Um, but like these other ones already have have those connectors. Um, there's also uh, information on the XDI deployment um, that we created um, and a subgraph for it. Um, so good place to kind of start uh, start hacking on this stuff uh, if you're interested in any of the, the stuff that I showed today. Um, we're uh, on Discord and, and on the DAO hack Discord as well.